is the Lord, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my son. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest droughts and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand
Let us pray. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Almighty, gracious, kind, and loving Father, we rejoice today. We rejoice in your name, dear Heavenly Father, for this great and wonderful opportunity to be in your presence today. You have called home, dear Father, a beautiful soul. Someone, dear Lord, that, have, that has labored in your work. Someone that sang in the choir for many years. And that on this special day, dear Father, you have called us so that we could celebrate her life today. And what a beautiful example she has been to all of us. She had walked the path of faith, the everlasting path, dear Father, that leads to everlasting life. And today, dear Father, we have been granted this beautiful opportunity as the congregation and as the family and as friends to come and say farewell to her. She's lived within our hearts, dear Father, so she will remain there. For we know in what a beautiful day and time period in her life to have been given this grace, afforded this grace to say farewell, and tomorrow she will join, as from today, she will join those whom have left us, and she will join those in yonder world. And tomorrow, dear Lord, she will serve, she will be served with Holy Communion for the first time in this beautiful place, this wonderful place which you have gone to prepare for all those who has left this earth. Dear Lord, so we've gathered here today and we've brought all our thanks and our praises. We've brought all our petitions unto you in this day. And we ask you, dear Father, please be with us now. Come into our presence, for we know in moments like these, dear Father, there are tears, there are sorrow, there are grief, but you have drawn us, you have drawn us to this place so that you can comfort us, so that you can bless us, so that you can strengthen us, that will allow us to remain faithful upon this beautiful path. Now cover us under the praise of our Apostle who has promised that he will remember us, that of our district and chief apostle. Dear Father, we await your blessing. We await your comfort. Strengthen us in these few moments. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 My dear bereaved family, dear brothers and sisters, firstly, I want to convey unto you as the family sincere condolences and all the very best and strength from our apostle to you as the family. I have a Bible word for this divine service taken out of the book of Mark, chapter 14, where we read verses 9. Mark 14, verse 9. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Liebe Brothers and Sisters, as basis vir hierdie grond, as hier, vir hierdie godsdienst, is ons bybel woord geneem in die boek van Markus 14, waarin ons die neende vers lees. Markus 14 vers 9. Voorwaar ek sê vir julle, ooral waar hier die evangelie oor die hele wereld verkondig word, daar sal ook gespreek word van wat sy gedoen het, tot een gedachtenis aan haar, tot dis weer.
never, never wanted to be made a fuss of. She never wanted to be made a fuss of. She was a very dignified senior lady because she was in her age, the age of 84. And today, dear brothers and sisters, dear bereaved family, we gather here to say farewell. And often, you know, especially when it comes to a divine service of this nature where I need to conduct a divine service of a senior, one of our senior members, I don't know where to start, to be honest with you. I don't know where to start because if you just quickly, just take a quick glance in the life of our sister. Dear brothers and sisters, it's a beautiful moment for us to come and say farewell to her. Wonderful moment. She had made a remarkable impression on the life of all of us. That's why we are here. At some point in your life, you had some interaction with my Emmy or Auntie Emmy, as most of us would know her. At some point. And hence, you have taken this time out today to come and say farewell to her. Liebe Brüder, Afrikaans te praat. Jy weet, as gevolg van my en Ise kindskap met ons Himmelse Vader, het ons, net so as wat sy, een prachtige een stevige en een sterk verhouding met God gehad. Dit was een verhouding wat eeuwigdierend was. Een verhouding tot op haar laatste. En dit is een verhouding wat sy opgebou het. Waar ons in die print en kom, liewe broers en sisters, ons het miskien hier en daar, het ons vir haar gehelp. As of haar familie of haar vriende, Ek is seker in haar tyd het sy ook miskien een bykie mismoedig geraak. Miskien hier en daar wil sy miskien een bykie opgee. En dit is waar ons ingekom het en ingepas het en gesê, nie, Auntie Emmy, nie, nou nie, hou nog so'n bykie aan. En dan het sy voortgegaan en sy het aangegaan om daar die stevige verhouding met God op te bou. Ach, liewe broeders en sisters, so is wat nou, en daar die verhouding, het ons ook met ons hemelse vader opgebouw, en wanneer die Heere ingryp, soos oomblikke, soos vandag, waarin ons vir haar moet kom vaarwel sê, dan verstaan ons, hoe belangrijk die verhouding, tussen my en my God is, tussen u en u God is, tussen haar en haar God is, En dit is die verhouding, lieve broeders en sisters, dit was een echte verhouding. Dit was een mooi verhouding gewees. Soos wat die verhouding met haar was, was haar verhouding met haar lieve God. En wat een prachtige gesintheid is dit nie, lieve broeders en sisters, lieve bedroefde familie en vandag, kom ons hier vol hart seer en ons kom tot sien sê vir haar. Ons is daar as pijn, hier en daar is daar miskien een bykie donkerte in my en u se lewe. En as gevolg van daar die donkerte, as gevolg van daar die pijn, liewe broeders en sisters, het ons een meester. En daar die meester is ons God. En ons kom na hom vandag en sê, Heere, ek het jou nodig in my lewe. Ek is hartseer, ek is hartseer vol pijn. Ek het smarte. Ek het troos nodig. En dis waarom ons ons toevlug vandag, liewe broers en sisters, na die allerhoogste God bring. Hier in sy huis, waar ons weet, waar ek en u weet, dat ons sal troos vind. Ek 
Je weet, en dit is, dit is normaal, wanneer geliefde van ons zou weggenomen wordt, dan wordt daar bij je vragen gevraagd. Jere, maar waarom zij? En lieve broers en zusters, om eerlijk te wees aan met u, ik was een van die mensen wat die vraag gevraagd, waarom zij? Hoe kom die ik niet? Of hoe kom die misschien iemand anders niet? Want zij te leven geleven voor die Jere. Zij het voor die Jere geleven. Zelfs, en dan wil ik toch voor u troos, lieve broers en zusters. Al vraag je die vraag, daar is geen fout aan mee. Dan meer. Die feit dat je die vraag vraagt, Jere, waarom zij? Want toen die Jere Jezus op die kruis gehangen het, het hij ook vraag gevraagd voor zijn God. Voor zijn vader het hij ook gevraagd, Jere, waarom het jij mij verlaat? En ik is zeker als die familie, zijn dochters, haar kennis, vraag Jere ook maar Jere. Kan je niet net toch zo'n so paar dagen of een paar jaar voor haar nog gegeet nie? Kan je niet nog zo? So? Ach, lieve broeders en zusters, lieve familie, vandaag wil ik vir julle sê, vandag wil ik julle getroos en die Heere en vir julle sê, wat die Heere gedoen het, is wel gedaan. Sy het haar prachtige werk hier op die aarde het sy voltooi, ik en u blij achter, lieve broeders en zusters. Denk dit aan die werk wat ik en u nog heb om te doen. Haar werk is voltooi, haar werk is gedaan. En wat draagt ons hier, dier, lieve broeders en zusters, die in die tijd? Dit is die troos wat ik en u vandaag ontvang, die die liefde en die genade van ons Heer Jezus Christus. Dit is wat voor mij en voor u draagt. Die gemeenteleider heeft voor mij gezegd in die week dat zij, zoals ma en mi ma is, zij wil niet op beetje En voor ochtend, toen ik nou hier in die badkamer stap, toen vlees de directe van mij, kijk, daar is zo'n beetje die maas bij je kort. Toen zei ik, ja, nee, kijk, of hij nou tien of twintig bladzijden is, of hij één bladzijde is, is fijn. Zolang ik iets van aan die emmie heb, ik wil graag dat voor je lees. Het is niet lang. Amelia was born on the 7th of May 1938 to faithful New parents in Genatendal. When I read this, then I said, yeah, I know a little bit of Genatendal. At the age of three, they relocated to Garden Village. Then I said, yeah, I even know Garden Village because I've worked in those areas in Maitland. She was one of four children, of which two have preceded her into the beyond. Emilia got married to Henry Gedult in 1964. Just like it. Kijk, so so aan die toe was nog een snot Ik ga maar niet die camera's is hier. They later, they later had, they later had uh, four children from the marriage. Henry, Henry later passed away in the year 2000. Her faithfulness and her love for singing was evident in her following as a New Apostolic Christian. On Tuesday, the 21st of June, 2022, Amelia was taken up in hospital and was called home on Friday, the 24th of June, 2022. She survived by four children, 11 grandchildren, and one sister. This is what the obituary is all about. I'm going to ask the choir, there is a hymn here. I'm going to ask the choir to sing for, sorry, the congregation after the obituary reading. The congregation will sing 86 in the English hymn.
Thank you, dear brothers and sisters. You know, I read to you a Bible word, and during this entire week, I res really wrestled to the Lord, and I said, you know, what word can I use for such a faithful child, such a faithful daughter? And it took me some time, really, to get to this word. And I would like just to give you a little bit of background, give you the context of this word, you know, where it started, right at the beginning when the Lord Jesus, just before his crucifixion, he was at a gathering in Bethany. And here he found himself among people like Lazarus, Simon, Martha, and Maria. And as they were having this beautiful gathering, this was just before his departure, before he was about to be crucified. And here they're having this celebration. And as Maria all, always would do, she would find herself sitting at the feet of the Lord Jesus. And it was no different at this point. But this time, she actually found herself sitting next to the Lord. Not at the feet, but next to him. And dear brothers, dear sisters, dear bereaved family, during that moment, as she shifted herself to go sit next to the Lord, there was this container of very, very expensive oil. And in the process, as she moved herself to go sit next to the Lord, unfortunately, this container actually broke. And what the result is, as she had this container, this broken container with some of this expensive oil in her hand, she poured some over the head of the Lord Jesus. Some obviously fell on his body. But dear brothers and sisters, those that were there at the time, they were extremely annoyed because they felt that this was such an expensive oil that has now been wasted. And the Lord Jesus immediately had to intervene and he said to them, but leave this woman, she knows what she's doing. And during this process, as she poured this oil over the Lord's head, and it fell on his body and his feet, she took her hair and actually just wiped his feet and his head with her hair. She cleaned it. In other words, the Lord Jesus described this moment as a moment of anointing him. Just, this was now just before, just before his crucifixion. And the Lord Jesus actually had to tell them, leave this woman alone. She knows what she's doing. She understands. And those that were around them, around the Lord, and at this gathering, as I've indicated, they said, but you know what? If this oil could have just been sold, it would have been sold for so much money. But the Lord wasn't interested in that. And hence, dear brothers and sisters, we come to our Bible word. And I want to read it to you again. Surely I say to you, wherever this gospel is, is, is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. More than 2,000 years ago, this was a happening that took place. But still today, we speak about this incident. We as Christians, we enjoy this moment and we just think and reminisce and think about, you know, what? imagine we were there at the time. What would our thoughts have been at that moment? But the Lord Jesus was very wise and he says, you know, for what she did was a memorial. In other words, it was something that will stand forever. And hence, dear brothers and sisters, more than 2,000 years ago, this was the happening. And today, we as Christians, we enjoy this beautiful celebration. This celebration that was a mistake, that was an accident.
incident at the time, and we can speak about this today. My dear brothers and sisters, we have come today to say farewell to a beautiful memorial. We have come and say goodbye to someone that has lived in your and my life, that has lived in your and my heart. And dear bereaved family, dear brothers and sisters, she has allowed that the Lord Jesus Christ becomes the author of her life. She has allowed that to happen. She has allowed that the Lord write into her heart. That the Lord write into her heart. And today you and I can experience that beautiful writings that the Lord, that she has allowed, the Lord, the Lord allowed to write in her heart during this time when she was on the face of the earth. And what a beautiful memorial is that, not dear brothers and sisters in life today. As you know, we get many good books. But we also get many not so good books. And what a beautiful book, good book for us today is my Emmy Not. If one can just look into her life and see how she lived. She lived as Maria lived. One that wanted to be at the feet of the Lord. One, when the Lord called, she was there. She didn't keep herself busy in the kitchen or all over the show, but this is where she wanted to be, beloved brothers and sisters, bereaved family. This is where she wanted to be in the house of the Lord. She wanted to be close to him, like Maria was. And hence today... <coughs> She has become a beautiful memorial to you and me. A memorial that is an everlasting memorial. A, mem a memorial that will live with you and me for as long as we live upon the face of the earth. And that was her life, dear brothers and sisters. That was this beautiful life she had. Now, let us even look a little bit further into the life of my Emmy. What kind of person she was. And today, you and my focus should be as children of God, should not be on what we're losing today. That should not be the focus, dear brothers and sisters, for all of us need to go. We will, at one point in time, we will have to leave this earth like my Emmy is leaving this earth today. So let us not focus on what we've lost or what we're losing today, but let the focus be on what you and I have gained over this period interacting with my Emmy. And I'm sure if I must just give you a moment and I must ask the congregation today, what is it that made an impact on you what impact did Auntie Emmy or Ma Emmy made on you? And each one of you today would have something to say. And then we will miss the rugby this afternoon. And I'm sure I don't want to go that route. <coughs> dear brothers, dear sisters, dear bereaved family, that what she had written in your heart, let it remain there. Build on that. She's leaving a beautiful legacy, left a beautiful legacy for you and me, for all of us. And we can just speak about the love. She was full of love. She was a very down-to-earth woman, very down-to-earth. You know, when I spoke in the sacristy to the rector and, and the brothers, I asked them, what? What, what, besides me knowing this little of her, what can you tell me about her? You know, dear brothers and sisters, and they just spoke about Auntie Emmy's humility, Auntie Emmy's faithfulness, Auntie Emmy had said, you don't want to make me a fast. You don't want to make me a fast. And hence, 
even today she's, she had said, I don't want any obituary. For this was a life, dear brothers and sisters. Her humanity. And it's not everybody here walking upon the face of the earth today that possesses this humanity. People, most people just live for themselves. What I can get out of it, it's more important than to have the gift of humanity. And this is what she had. She lived the life according to what the Lord expected of her. Her sacrifices, she sang in the choir for many years up until her late age. She sang in the choir for this was a passion. This was a joy. My dear brothers and sisters, dear bereaved family, and so we can go on and on and on. She's leaving behind beautiful memories for you and me. She's leaving behind, dear brothers and sisters, this legacy, a legacy which is focused on the return of Christ. She lived for the Lord. She lived for a fellow human being. And that's why we are so many here today. And even those who are connected with us. So many of us. It's because of this beautiful life Auntie Emmy has lived. And the nicest part of everything, beloved brothers and sisters, she could do what she could. And even went beyond the call of duty. Now going beyond the call of duty, it needs to be done. You need to have, dear brothers and sisters, you have not, not only to have the element of humanity, but you need to be galvanized with humanity. You need to be galvanized with faith as a child of God. And hence, she allowed herself to go beyond the call of duty. You know, often we ask ourselves when we approach moments like this, and then the big question is always, you know, what will they say about me one day when I'm no longer there? What will they say about me? Dear brothers and sisters, dear bereaved family, I want to encourage you today. Just serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with your whole heart. Love him. Love his work. Love his people. And that is what they will say about you when the Lord call you home like today in the life of Auntie Amy. What more can we say about her? She lived a life that, is, that was pleasing in the, eyes, in the eyes of God. She lived a life that was ex exemplary to all of us. So, dear brothers and sisters, and with that, with her life here upon the face of the earth she lived, she possessed beautiful gifts, the gifts of God that was placed in her, and she made sure that she utilized those gifts. And that gifts, dear brothers and sisters, knowingly or unknowingly, was placed in you and me as a child of God, as a family member, as an acquaintance, as a friend, as a neighbor, as a colleague, through her beautiful gifts that she displayed. And these gifts she made use of in sharing with us. And what a beautiful way, what a beautiful way and life it is to live if you and I are able to share those gifts. So, I want to come back to our word. Focus on the last part of this word. What this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. So what she had done, beloved, will live with us forever. May God bless us. May God strengthen us as the family and as friends during this time. It's not easy to give of a loved one. It's not easy to give of a mother. It's not easy to give of a sister in the congregation 
whom we have loved over the years. So, we've come to this moment. Now, dear brothers and sisters, we, you and I, we are the ones that remain behind now. And what do we take with us? What do we take from Auntie Emmy or my Emmy into our lives? Can your and my life also be a memorial where people can say, you know, where the Lord can say, you've served well, come into my kingdom. And tomorrow, what a beautiful moment for us today, beloved. Can we imagine the beautiful rejoicing in yonder world the many that will welcome her into that place that is gone, that is that has been prepared for her. What a beautiful time. What a beautiful timing, I shall say, even, for her to experience the first divine service for departed tomorrow. There will be great rejoicing. There will be wonderful joy. There will be happiness from those whom have gone before them. So, our sister, your mother, is leaving us today not homeless. She's going to that beautiful place that has been prepared for her. So, let us pray even harder. Let us pray as never before. So that, dear brothers and sisters, we stay focused. We remain focused. For we know our goal is with the Lord. And that is what we await. We wait for that moment when we can all be with him like she has experienced today. And let this comfort be a beautiful strength for us. Let this comfort be, dear brothers and sisters, a beautiful joy for us. Let this comfort of today's word. She was a woman that left behind, as the words say, that I will also be told as a memorial to her. In other words, you know, that will be spoken of her. That will people make them to understand who this person really was. May God bless us, dear brothers and sisters. May we draw strength from this divine service. May we live the life that Auntie Emmy lived. And here, by dear brothers and sisters, I want to say, she was not perfect, like all of us. None of us are perfect. She had a nukke and tukke and goedes, ne? She had it. <laughs> but, let us focus on the beautiful legacy that she left behind in your and my life. God bless us, dear, and dear brothers and sisters. Let us remain faithful and let us stay strong until the Lord come in your and my life. Amen. Amen. So, dear brothers and sisters, as it is a I'll surrender the body to the earth. We can rise, please. Ik vertrouw nou die sterfelijke lichaam toe aan die aarde met die woorde stof tot stof, aarde tot aarde. As tot as. Siel en gees gee ons echter oor aan die liefde van Jesus Christus wat het sal bewaar tot die opstanding na die eeuwige lewe. Die Heere sal jou uitgang en jou ingang bewaar van nou af tot in alle eeuwigheid. Amen. Amen. Kan ons sluit tussenblief. Liewe Himmelse Vader, ons bring ons het dank voor u vandag. Voor Jesu liefde en genade is het in woordigheid in ons leven vandaag. En wat een prachtige voorbereiding voor ons als ikenis vermoren, waarin ons Vader weer die verbinding zal he met ons geliefdes die we vooraf gegaan het. Waar maar Emmy voor hulle zal aansluit, waar zij zal aansluit bij hulle. En ons vraag Vader dat zij een vrije toegang tot daar die plek sal he wat voorbereid is vir haar. Nou bly ons ons achter, lieve vader, en ek vraag dat u die troos sal gee, dat u die liefde 
en die genade zal schenken aan die familie, die vrienden, die collega's, die gemeente. Laat ons voel en dat ons altijd bewust is en weet dat u saam met ons is. Zo, so, vader, vraag ik oor iets, dat u hand van siening nou oor alles zal er is. Oor allemaal van ons die we hier tegenwoordig is en die we ook aangesluit het bij ons. Schenk aan ons bij meer als wat ons kan vragen. Ons bid het in Jesus naam. Amen. Amen. Die genade van ons Heer Jesus Christus en die liefde van God en die gemeenschap van die Heilige Geest wees met die allemaal. Amen. Eerstens, dank je aan ons de directeur waar die tijd gemaakt heeft om een paar oomblikzaamheden te wees en dan 
graag bedank ons familie en vriende vir uh, boodskap van help en opbering vir die familie. So ook wil ons ook die begrafenis ondernemer baie dankie sê vir die uitstekende dienst wat die lever en oor die algemeen ja, ken wat die tyd gehad het om wel hier een paar oomblikke saam met ons hier deur te bring. Baie dankie. Gaan verder en dan wil ek ook bysê onze godsdienst is morgen ochend 8 uur. As jylle welkom morgen ochend, jylle is hartelijk welkom. Baie dankie. So dear brothers and sisters, I now ask that the forebearer please come to the front. And uh, while the cortege leave the wall, the congregation will sing triple, triple two. Congregation 222 in the English Union. 